Alright, how you going guys? Frank and... Sarah. Sarah, that's it. Here with another video. So, today's video is going to be on budget. Mm. So, we've been here in uh, Jiang Tien for about a week and a half now. Um, moved in a couple of days after we got here into our apartment. Mm. Uh, we've just been just trying to live our lives and not overspend. And yep. try to work out a, a budget, something that's kind of realistic for us mm. uh, and something we can share with you guys so then you can get some ideas of what kind of, um, what costs you're going to incur while you're here Yeah. Uh, and just what the prices of those things are because yep. I know a lot of people are looking for information on um, moving to Thailand, wherever that is and hopefully you get some good information out of this. Yeah, for sure. And we'll put the Australian and the American dollars up too just so... Um, our American viewers can see what it would be in their currency. I might even uh, put some British pounds in there if I'm feeling <laughs> uh, generous. But yeah, so the big one, the big uh, cost is going to be rent. Yeah. Uh, so we got ourselves a one bedroom, one bath apartment in mm -hmm. Jong Tien. Uh, it costs 10,000 baht a month. Mm. So we just walked, we looked on Facebook Marketplace and we found a bunch of different units in Pattaya and Jong Tien and Pratamak and Wongamak, mm -hmm. all those places, even as far down as Bang Sarai. Yeah. But we wanted to be in Jong Tien, so we conversed with a bunch of different um, agents. We checked out a place which wasn't too bad, but we didn't find, we didn't think was for us. Yeah. And we found this place just by walking in to the the lobby, the building. Yeah. Asked about it, and the lady um, showed us this place. Mm -hmm. And we moved in. Was it the next day? I think it was two days later. Two days later. Yeah, it was two days later. So the next mm -hmm. day we went back and we did all the paperwork, mm -hmm. paid the deposit, which was two months, and then one month of rent. So mm -hmm. in total, it was thirty thousand baht. Mm. And luckily for us as well, included, not included, but able to be set up without mm. any external sources was internet. Yeah. So we've got unlimited, um, unlimited home broadband. Yeah. Uh, for five hundred baht uh, a month, which is a pretty good deal from yeah. what I've seen. Internet was set up, I think, three days after we moved in. Yeah. Um, so we moved in on the Friday and we had it by Tuesday, which was. I think really good. If you're in Australia, you have to wait like two or three weeks to get internet set up in your place. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and usually you don't have it done by the person organising the unit as well. Yeah. Um, usually it's something you have to do yourself, you know, call up the provider, Telstra, whoever, mm -hmm. whichever country you're in. But this one, we don't even know who it's through, but um, it works well. Yeah, it works really well. Yeah. Yeah, the uploads are a whole lot faster here, which mm. is great. The next one is our phones. Mm. So we went to Terminal 21 in Pattaya, mm. which is a big shopping center. They've got a few in Thailand. Yeah. And we were just looking for the large providers yeah. in Thailand. So I saw the best one was AIS, and I think it's the biggest or one of the biggest. Mm. We went in there, the lady was super helpful. She set it all up for us. Mm. It was done within 10 minutes, you know, a SIM card. Yeah. Um, our number activated, our online um, app that you can use to pay the bill mm. as well was set up by by her. Uh, and we pay 300 baht a month each. Each, yeah. Um, and you can just pay for it through the app that they provide you. Um, the only setup cost for the phones was buying a SIM card, which was 50 baht each. Yep. Um, which is pretty cheap. I think it works out to be about two Australian dollars. Just over two Australian dollars, yep. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, it was just super easy to get it set up and get our phones working. Pretty much started working immediately, which was awesome. Yep. Um, yeah. It was, so they're through, yeah, 300 baht a month and mm -hmm. they include 80 gigabytes of um, internet and yep. I think regular tall, uh, tools, calls and texts yep. <laughs> uh, to tie to tie numbers. 
it's broken down into I think it's is it 10 10 gig 10 gig so. is like super fast speeds and then the remaining 70 is at a slower speed but we've I've had a message and it said you've gone through your super fast mm. and I'm just rocking the normal one now and it's Still going fast, as, yeah. yeah it goes as fast as I'm used to I need it you know mm. so it's, it's definitely not a big issue so phones pretty easy to set up all you need is a passport mm. um, and money and you're all set up we as we said we've only been here for just over a week so we haven't had any electricity bills or water bills mm. when we uh, moved in we asked the lady and she said that the the electricity and the water were going to be charged at Thai rates mm. so the government sets an official rate for electricity and water mm -hmm. and that's what we're going to pay so I know in other places I have seen through doing research before moving here that places would especially apartments they would charge more for electricity I'm not sure on water but mm. there'd be a Thai price of say five baht and they'd charge you like eight baht yeah I saw that a lot more um, being talked about in Airbnbs and more short-term stays mm. so that's something you got to watch out for when you do move into a place and when you're getting the contract make sure that you read it just make sure that you're getting the government rate yeah because it can save you like half the price yeah Yep, yeah, sure. it all depends on the landlord, but legally you, you're entitled to be paying the mm. government rate, so make sure that you do do that. Just on housing too, a lot of places here um, don't do short-term leases, mm. um, so just look out for that. We, I think, got lucky and got a six-month lease, but a lot of places do only do 12 months. Um, with your 12-month leases, you are going to get a lower rent rate, mm. um, but a lot of the time you can sort of say, I only want to stay for six months, they might just put the rent up by a couple of thousand baht per month. Yep. Um, but it's still pretty negligible depending on, just depending on the agent and like how much money they want for the unit. Yeah, yeah, that's mm. true. So if you're going anything under six months, then you're most likely going to be best off going through Airbnb mm. or another one of those uh, websites. Mm. Agoda, I think as well, do short term yep. uh, rentals. But yeah, if you look on a if you're looking online, you're mostly going to find all yearly contracts. Mm. Some may be able to be negotiated down mm. to a six month, but anything below six month is pretty rare mm. to find as a rental, which yep. I mean, in Australia, it's exactly the same. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, it is. So yeah. With your rentals too, definitely would highly recommend um, hitting up Facebook Marketplace because mm. there's so many like good cheap rentals. I think they're mostly private landlords, um, but they don't. Like, I think the private landlords probably don't take as much of a cut of the rent as um, if you were to go through like a, an agent. So definitely would recommend hitting up Facebook Marketplace before you go to any of the real estate agents around here. Yeah, I used um, patio condos slash apartments mm. for rent. Yeah, we can link sale. it all in the description anyway. So yeah. um, if you're interested, you can have a look through there. Yeah, so that that's mm. the one I use, and I I found heaps of um, heaps of uh, yeah. people willing to help me, agents and mm. private landlords, and as well, it's a good place to kind of get an idea of what you're going to be paying and what the market's mm. like, because I was monitoring it for about three four months before we moved here, so I yeah. could kind of get an idea of what the money we wanted to spend was going to get us, mm. and just kind of kept it realistic as to you know. What, what we were actually going to get, where we were going to get it, and uh, for what price. So it, yep. it's good to have uh, that information before you move as well. Just mm. it, it helps you have an idea as well, so you're not flying and going in completely blind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think it depends on like whether or not you come in high or low season as well, because we came. The it's, it's at, at the moment it's low season still it's still rainy season um so i think we got a pretty good deal but if you're coming right in peak high season um you might expect not to pay get, more. Yeah, yeah as good a deal as what we got but yeah just um keep that in mind as well yeah true mm. seasons do play a big part in um costs of a lot of things in thailand mm. so just bear that in mind when you come um next, next big one would be food mm. so this one's going to be hard. We've started getting a bit of a routine into what we eat and mm. how much we spend. Just kind of get our head around the prices of um, 
what a lunch dinner should cost. Yeah. Um, so for breakfast, I don't eat breakfast, Sarah does. Mm. And what do you eat? I eat muesli mostly. Usually I'll have a bowl of muesli with like a banana and a coffee in the morning. Yeah. Um, so for some reason muesli is really expensive here. <laughs> in it's comparison like, to other yeah. things, yeah. But, so it's like, for what I've been eating, 200 to 250 baht for a packet of muesli, but you get a kilo of it and it usually lasts me about a week and a half. Um, the last pack that we bought got eaten by ants, so I had to chuck it out, so we got to go grocery shopping again, but um, yeah, that usually lasts me like a week and a half. Yeah. Um, and then fruit, like bananas and stuff we've been getting from the fruit, fruit market, which works out cheaper than getting it from a supermarket, and you seem to be able to get better produce just buying it on the street. Um, yeah. So the bananas, the last thing of bananas we bought was like 45 baht, which is under $2. Yep, mm. about two dollars. Yep. Australian. Um, so yeah, Sarah only eats breakfast. Um, so we put that down for about five hundred baht a month, mm. which is just over twenty Australian dollars for breakfast. Mm -hmm. um, then you got lunch. So we've been testing it out, and pretty much every day we've been having lunch from Seven Eleven. Mm. Now they offer uh, a wide variety of choices because 7-Elevens are pretty much everywhere in mm. Thailand. Yeah. Um, so we've been getting just like the pre-made meals, which are still quite healthy. You can mm. just Google translate the um, the macros, the ingredients in it to see yeah. how many calories, protein, carbs, and that yeah. kind of thing. I can um, use my fitness <clears throat> pal for that. If that's something yeah. you're interested in, you can just scan the barcode. It'll bring up a whole thing of like macros, calories, everything you need to know about the meal, and then you can sort of make an informed decision on it from there. Yeah, that's it. It's it, whether you're into fitness or not, having that My Fitness Power, you just straight scan the barcode and mm. it comes up in English um, what what's in it. So it, mm. it's really helpful, even if you, as I said, not in the fitness um, kind of scene, just to have an idea of what's in your food. So you mm. can, you know, you don't have to count all your calories but yeah. it's just a good idea in general just to be you know aware conscious of mm. how average uh the calories are within a meal yeah and don't get us wrong you can get <clears throat> some pretty average meals from 7-eleven yep um if you're getting like the cheeseburgers and the toasted sandwiches and <clears throat> stuff but we tend to just stick to um like the pre-made like rice and chicken type meals Yep. You microwave it, usually about 45 to 60 baht, depending on what you get. 60 baht's probably on the more expensive side, um, but 45 is pretty... I think 45 is about average price. It's about average. Lunch. Yeah. Uh, pretty much every day, my one costs 39 baht, so yep. that's uh, just under two Australian dollars. Mm -hmm. So probably about a one pound and yep. just over a dollar American, so they're healthy ish yeah. they're pretty good yeah um they're filling they're easy and um yeah it's Thai Cheap. food as well yeah it tastes good yeah so generally on lunch per day i think we're spending like four or five australian dollars um yeah just depending on what we get yeah so about average like a hundred about a hundred baht so mm -hmm. yeah about just over four dollars in total it's just under um thirty four hundred uh, but a month on lunch which is about 145 Australian mm. so this budget will be revisited as well because yeah. we're new to this so we need to make sure that we can actually sustain this kind of thing but mm. it's just a rough guide so you guys can get an idea of what we're eating what we're spending and hopefully mm. it carries over to you as well so yeah. you can have a rough idea uh, next up is dinner mm -hmm. so on here, we've got three nights of spending a bit more and then the other four nights of spending a bit less. So dinner would include, if we have a beer, um, a drink and just the food as well. Mm. So we're not drinking at lunch. Um, I'm not drinking at breakfast, do you? No. Okay. <laughs> so we're not drinking during the day. If we do have a drink, it'll be at night. Mm. So we've got three nights about 300 baht and mm. this is eating out as well. And then about four nights at just over 100 baht. Mm. So it all depends. If you go to a restaurant, you can spend a lot of money. 
you can also find restaurants that are quite cheap and the food mm. is still great. Yep. And then as well, you can always go to street food, mm. which just walking along the front of well, the beach road at John Tien. Mm, there's like, tons of them. Yeah, yeah, all different types, you know. Um, rice with, you know, chicken, there's meat skewers. Grilled, yeah. Yeah, grilled. There's like the live... They weren't live fish, they were live like little uh, shrimp things. or something or plankton, I don't know. Yeah. Probably not plankton, they're probably too big to be plankton. If but anyone knows what they are, tell us because I'm really curious. <laughs> yeah. I haven't got the balls to try it yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not quite ready to just bite into yeah. a live animal, but yeah, um, yeah. And you've also got desserts, you know. Like last night, we bought ourselves three kilos of mango mm. for a hundred baht, so yep. four bucks for, and it was seven, seven mangoes, seven mangoes, yeah. beautiful, ripe. They're so good. <laughs> They're awesome for dessert. and yep. you know, healthy, good Gives size you that too. Sweet fix too. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so yeah, we've got. Yeah, you can do street food, you can do restaurants. So we kind of went under the idea that we were going to go to restaurants um, for about half the week and then mm. street food, cheaper food, even 7-Eleven meals for dinner as well mm. uh, for the rest of the week. Yeah, just depending on if we want to have a night in or not. Um, yeah. With your dinners and stuff as well, like you can find, there are some really expensive places. Um, yeah. So it's a good idea, like just to go for a walk a little bit outside of the expensive places because um, you can get probably better food for a better price if you just walk down from the beach up one of the sort of long side soys side there. Soys yeah. Um, yeah. And you can generally find a better deal on food and stuff there. Um, on that too, like we don't really drink or party. Um, so we'll have like a beer with dinner, maybe one after dinner. And then that's pretty much it. So we're not spending a shitload of money on alcohol, partying, all that sort of stuff. It's just not really who we are. Um, yeah. But definitely I can see how it would be easy to fall into the trap of just like... Oh, yeah. Buying, like going out drinking every single night and spending all your money on that. Yeah, um, especially in the patio area. Mm. John Tien though as well. Like you can... There's so many just yeah. side street soys that just have, you know bars, mm. massage places, yada yada, yeah. all along the street. So, yeah, you, you've you definitely got to watch out for that, but mm. at the end of the day... Well, beer's so cheap too, it's easy to just be like, oh yeah, I'll have four or five beers and mm. yeah. spend a ton of money on it. Yeah. But that, it all adds up, especially if you do it sort of every night. Yeah, it really does add up. So, mm. um, yeah, based on that, it was about... Uh, 5200 mm. but a month for dinner which is about 225 Australian dollars mm. so um, yeah it's not too bad that's that's eating out pretty much every night almost oh yeah most of the night mm. most of the nights <laughs> <laughs> in saying that too we do prefer to go and sit down in a restaurant um, just because mm. we like to people just relax watch. while we're eating and people watch and all that sort of stuff but if you are trying to do this on a really strict budget, you can get street food and just sit on the side of the street and eat your food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, as well, we're eating mostly Thai food. So mm. Thai food is a lot cheaper in Thailand. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Western food, pizza, burgers, so baguettes, expensive. Whatever, yeah. whatever you want. Yeah, mm. you can. They have um, places that can make them cheap. Mm. You know, they're still going to be more expensive than Thai food, but you can get like cheaper ones. But for the most part, especially Western chains like uh, McDonald's, Burger mm. King, uh, Domino's, Pizza Hut. Uh, I don't know where the pizza company is from, but they're also quite expensive. So, yeah, if you're, if you're looking for Western food, be prepared to pay more because mm -hmm. uh, Thai food is obviously the cheapest, the most readily available mm. and a lot of the ingredients from Western food is imported as well, so that's going to cost a bit of money and they're going to add it to the bill. Yeah. So, in total, well, actually, finally, sorry, we have snacks. Mm. So, snacks is just miscellaneous food, you know, a beer, wherever, mm. uh, a coffee from 7 Eleven. After gym protein shake. Yeah, after gym just protein whatever. shake, mm. um, the mangoes that we purchased before, yeah. any fruit like that. 
So we got here about 8,400 um, baht a month, which is the 360 bucks. So that's the most expensive out of all of them. But um, those little things add up, you know, like protein mm. shake after gym, a coffee, coffee. I'll have like two, two coffees, coffees a day. <laughs> yeah. Energy drink for me. Yeah, before yeah. we go to the gym, get a little Red Bull bottle, like 10 baht, so yeah. like 25 cents. So it's cheap, but water. all these things add up. Mm. Yeah, water as well. You can't drink tap water, mm. wouldn't recommend it. So we, we buy um, bottles of water and then fill mm. them up at the reverse osmosis machine. Yeah. Which they usually have a each apartment building yeah typically has one of those yeah it's five baht and we fill up pretty much two six liter bottles mm. so it's just yeah. under 12 liters for five baht which is mm. which is nothing um so that's that's food that's accommodation mm. all the other things we aren't 100 percent sure on yet so like internet and stuff uh oh, not internet so electricity, water electricity. electricity, water, we don't know yet because mm. we haven't received the bill. Um, you've got little things in the house that, um, you know, cosmetics, cleaning supplies, mm. um, you know, rubbish bags, that kind of thing. That comes to about, say about a thousand baht a month. Yeah. Just give or take. Mm -hmm. As we've said, we haven't lived a month here yet, so we don't know, but yeah. Yeah, um, other than that... Another thing to know as well, when we first got here, there was a little bit of a setup cost, so um, obviously you have to pay your rental deposit and all that sort of stuff, um, so you've got to make sure when you get over here you have enough money for that. Travel insurance was another thing that we had to pay for, um, that was in our budget. Um, we also have certain things, like because we're doing YouTube, we've got to pay for Epidemic Sound, um, Gym membership also costs money, um, depending on where you go to the gym, like you can spend a shitload of money on your gym membership here, mm. but if you find like a gym that's got all the equipment you need, you don't necessarily have to spend a shitload of money, like we spent a thousand baht each for a month um, at the gym that we've been going to, the, the Muay Thai gym, yeah. um, and then when Frank wants to do a Muay Thai session one on one, it's just an extra 200 baht every session. Mm. Um, so yeah, it just depends on like what you're doing and stuff and we know obviously not everybody has gym membership they need to pay for yep. um, but that's something that's important to us so we obviously want to do that. Yep. Um, travel insurance, we're with Safety Wing, that cost us... Uh, I think it was about, for six months, about 700 Australian dollars each. Mm. So about 1500 yep. total, 14 to 1500 Australian yep. total with Safety Wing. Yep. So, so that's, that was... Yeah, that's yeah. for six months. Yeah. So that's another thing that you need to factor in. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, just in terms of living in Thailand, it's just mm. existing. Everybody's different. Some people may already have insurance. Uh, some may not want it. Mm. May not find it necessary. Yeah. All that jazz. But yeah, this is um, this is the start of our budget. We thought mm. we'd share with you um, so far what we've found that we're spending and just give you a. A bit of an average, a rough yeah. guide as to what things are going to cost uh, in Thailand, mm -hmm. uh, specifically Jom Tien Pattaya region, mm. and then hopefully it'll help you guys make an informed decision and save up some money and yeah. budget it well, so you're not um, yeah fucked. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, I definitely recommend giving yourself at least a year to just save and set up and get ready to come over here, especially if you're young like us. Mm. Um, like we understand that a lot of people, you know, you've been working your whole life, you're retiring over there, all that sort of stuff. Um, and that's awesome for you, but we had to actually work really hard, save a lot of money and then come over here and we gave ourselves pretty much 12 months mm -hmm. to do that. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. If you're going to do it, I know it's exciting and you want to come over here and do it straight away and all that sort of stuff, but yeah, definitely would recommend just giving yourself a little bit of extra time so you've got a little bit of extra money to fall back on if you do find yourself in trouble. Yeah, yeah, that's it. They say that the best way to do something is just to start it, mm. but at the same time, it's good to be realistic and to save yourself up some money. Give yourself a yep. safety net as well, mm. like we did, because uh, I know for me, if I don't have a lot of money, I, the stress level increases. So mm. having that kind of buffer, 
that uh, cushion zone there really helps uh, just make everyday life a bit easier because you know you've got a bit of um, mm -hmm. um, wiggle room to make some mistakes, to try yeah. try different things out and to stop doing things if they don't work for you. Mm -hmm. You don't feel like you need to, um, you know, success is, uh, needs to be immediate and mm -hmm. is what you should be focused on. Because we yeah. moved here to have a good work-life balance. So mm -hmm. We want to make sure that while we're working and putting an effort to make some great videos and to build this channel, we also want to spend some time enjoying our lives together mm. um, and just existing in uh, this paradise. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, other than that, I don't think there's too much else to report. No, I think that's about it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely give you an updated budget yeah. once we've tested it out a little bit more, but yeah. to start, I think that's good. Yeah, hopefully you guys found some information that's helpful for you. Yeah. Uh, as we said, yeah, it is a, um, a very rough budget. We'll revisit this in the next uh, couple of months mm -hmm. or so, and we'll give you a bit more refined information and see mm -hmm. if anything's changed for us, if yeah. we've shifted our attitude or our routine to mm -hmm. include something else or to take something else away. Mm -hmm. But for the time being, that's what we've got for you guys. Mm -hmm. um, like and subscribe if you'd be so kind. Yeah. We appreciate uh, it. Yeah, we're nearly at uh, half the way to monetization, so yeah. we're really quite happy to wake up in the morning and see a few, few more a subs, few, a, few many, few more. <laughs> a few more subs and a cow out there. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we do really appreciate it. So thanks a lot. Yeah, we really, mm. yeah, we do really appreciate it, guys. Thanks mm. for following uh, all the comments as well. We really appreciate yep. the engagement.